today's video we're going to be doing a timing belt on a 1.4 16 valve uh, Lupo 2003 it does apply to the newer models and maybe some of the older models that have also got the uh, 1416 valve it'll be fairly similar to the 8 valve as well um, obviously they've only got one belt this has got two timing belts so if I pop off this little cover here I'll be able to show you both of the timing belts. There's just these two clips, one there and one at the back. And then this should pop out nice and easily without having to take off the engine cover. So I've got to wiggle it out. And you can see there how it lips under. So you have got to pull it around the engine cover. So here we can see we've got two belts, obviously that's the camshaft belt, that's timing belt and on the 8 valve I think it's basically the same, obviously it's only got the timing belt. So now I've got that cover off there, I'm just going to get on with basically stripping away anything that's in my way, so intake, engine mounts, uh, I'll be going down underneath taking the drivers, well this is a right hand drive but the drivers side front wheel off so I can get to the crank pulley. I've taken the aux belt off, uh, the lower timing covers off, and then I'll be locking the crank and the camshaft in place for when I take the belts off. Right, so I've just completely loosened off these two outer bolts and the middle one, I've just undone it probably about half an inch so I've got a bit of clearance under the um, engine mount between the engine mount and the other engine mount I guess so now that's dropped the engine a little bit for me so I've got access to the crank bolt and that's a 19mm uh, 12 point so if I put this ratchet on here, it allows me to turn the engine over. And the reason I need to do that is, if you look here, there's a little pin. And that sort of tells you where the timing mark is. So if you look here, I've put my glove behind it, you can see the little notch. And that little notch needs to be in line with the timing markings that are on this cover. So you can see the timing markings there. There's two. There's this one here which isn't the one that we need to line up with, it's the edge of this this one here. Uh, this one's got a Z on it, this one's got a zero on it. So we need to line up the timing markings on the front edge of the crank puller with the edge of that plastic notch. And then we can take the crank pulley off. And then if you look up here, there's these two holes, so that one and that one will once the crank pulley is in the right place, those two holes will be about here somewhere, in line with each other. And then this is the camshaft locking tool, which will slide straight in once we've moved the engine mount out of the way. So I'll be taking the crank pulley off with an impact gun, because it's easier. But you can use um, a pulley holding tool in these notches. Right, so I've lined up the notch on the front of the crank pulley that you can see there, with the edge of that plastic notch. And then if you look at the top, those two holes are in the right place now for this tool to go in. So if we just offer it up, we can see that the holes are the right distance apart. <clears throat> so now I'm going to lower it down, um, take the crank pulley off, take the lower timing cover off before I lower it down actually. And then I'm going to lower it down, put a jack underneath the sump of the engine remove this engine mount, remove this engine mount and then I'll be able to take tension off the belt and remove both belts. 
So now I've got to take the load timing cover off. It looks like somebody's lift one of the bolts out and the crank pull is eating into the plastic up there. See if we can get a better shot of it. So you can see there, there's a load of, that should be smooth, there's a load of like grooves that have been worn in. So I'm going to have to find a bolt to replace the bottom bolt that's missing down there. I don't know if you can see it on camera. And then there's a bolt at that side. So you can see the rusty bolt head there. That one needs to come out. Uh, there's two, I think there's two up top. And there's definitely one. And I think the other side might be just a clip. So I'll show you what fixings it's got once I've got the timing cover out. Okay, so now I've got the timing cover off. You can see there's a bolt that goes in there, a bolt in there, and a bolt in there. And then there's two clips on the back side. And as you can see, the crank pull is worn a big groove in it because somebody didn't put a bolt in that, that one there. And this one wasn't tightened all the way down. Right, so a second way to time the bottom end up is if you look on the actual crank, on the end of the crank itself, you'll notice there's one of the teeth has got like a chamfer on the end of it, this one here. And then if you look at the casing behind it, you'll notice there's 2V and 4V. Obviously, this is at four valves per cylinder, so this one needs to be lined up with the 4V line. And if it's an 8 valve, then it'll be lined up with the 2V line. They must obviously use the same block for both engines, just a different cylinder head. Uh, so that's the second way you can time it up if you've already taken the crank pulley off. Right, I've just taken tension off the timing belt. And if you look up there, that tensioner there with the bolt that's half sticking out is a 13mm. So if you just loosen the 13mm and then it should just slacken the belt off without having to intervene anymore. So that tension will be getting replaced when I've got the rest of it off. Uh, that idler on the right hand side will be getting replaced as well. And then if you look right up there, you can see another pulley that's got like a flat face on it. That's the water pump. That'll be getting replaced. And then if we look even further up, you might be able to see the top tensioner for the cam belt right at the very top. That'll be coming off next. Yeah, I've removed the engine mount that was here and then I've jacked it up with a block of wood under the engine, under the sump. So that allows me to jack the engine up higher than it should be, which gives me access to these 16mm bolts on this engine mount. So now I can take that off and that'll give me more access to the cam belt tensioner that's down here. And I can also take the timing belt off. Right, now I've got more access, I'm going to be removing this idler back here. Um, I'll pull this out so that you can actually see. Now, if you just look there, there's like a little aluminium arm that comes to an idler. And then I think that's a 16. And it's got like a hole in the arm where it makes space for a bolt that's holding the water pump in.
Right, so that's taken quite a bit of tension off the belt now. As you can see, it's fairly loose. I'm going to take that one down there off. So that one's a 15. Right, so now there's loads of slack on the belt. I should be able to slide it off nice and easily. Just like that. And now that's given us more access to this cam belt tensioner, which is a 13. So now I can take tension off the cam belt. So you can see it's removed all the tension. That's the tensioner for the cam belt. And then the cam belt just slips off nice and easy. So that's the cam belt off, and then I'll be removing the bottom tensioner, replacing the water pump, and then putting all the new stuff on. Alright, so just a quick look at the new parts. Obviously, that's the old tensioner, new one there. These are still the same. Old idler, new idler. It's all basically the same. It's changed a little bit. Obviously, that's got like a a red cover on the bearings so they might have changed manufacturer or something and then as you can see that's the old belt doesn't look too bad condition in comparison to a new one it's not frayed or damaged or anything and then that's the new water pump all right so i've just finished tensioning this top cam belt now if you look underneath you can see that the indicator is pointing directly at that little bulge in the middle. That's how it has to be. The bottom tensioner is similar scenario to the top tensioner with the hole lining the arrow up and everything. Now, when I'm putting the new timing belt on, I'm probably going to put the crank bolt in just to hold the uh, sprocket on because it will come off. It's, it's free to come off if it's not seized on. So, obviously it's got a keyway, so it's not going to be put on in the wrong place so I'm going to put this back on put the crank bolt in and then that'll hold that in place so the time belt doesn't pull it off when I tension it so like I said that's the arrow there and then it's got to line up with that small groove there and then this sits around a 10mm bolt that's down there, uh, right next to it. Right, so I've finished putting all the bottom end back together now. So I'm just going to finish up, tighten this up, put the cover on and put the air intake back on. Right, so now I've just got to top the coolant up, turn it over by hand, just to make sure everything's clear and is still in time, and then I'll fire it up. Right, I've just topped up the coolant, so I'm going to leave the coolant cap off because obviously I need to re-bleed the system now, and I'm going to go for the first fire up. So that one's spot on. Uh, I'm just going to leave it running for the next half an hour and top it up with coolant, bring it up to temperature and make sure everything's alright.